<laughs> Let's go. All right, all right. What's going on, you guys? This is Mark, and I have a couple of um pieces of information. Sorry if you sorry if you heard that. That was my phone going off. But um, if uh. I have a couple of important pieces of information to share with you guys. We just got some major updates on the Vic Mignogna case. It seems like every other day there's new information coming out on this, which is great. Um, because it, we get to know about it. it. It is open to the public, unlike what these voice actors are saying. Just because, the, just because a private investigation was underway does not mean that if a court case is, results from said investigation, that that information is not available to the public, and I believe that's what these people, that's one of the things that these people have forgotten. But anyway, let's go on ahead and uh, get into this proper. All right, so first of all, um, for those of you who don't know, um, the not really the deposition, but the main court hearing happened today. And so this is a these are some screenshots that were taken from uh, Supergirl. So uh, so uh, sh shout out to Supergirl for this post, um, as well as the other one that we're gonna get to in a second. But um, so evidently this person was an eyewitness to it it was a it's a first-hand account although this isn't like a transcript or anything like an official transcript so take that so do with that as you will but for right now this is pretty much all we've got as far as what went on at when as far as what went on during that um hearing uh earlier today but anyway so, uh, this was on the Cute Reformers website, um, if I could find a link to it, if I can find a link to it, I'll, uh, I'll post it, I'll post it, um, in the, in the description, but if I can't, then I'm sorry, but <laughs> anyway, so, updating this as more info comes. The verdict? You know they went in for, you know they went in for a hearing for confidentiality. I know the judge is probably pissed. Shane wasn't there, of course he wasn't. Casey was a sassy that, um, a jerk. He mentioned Nick's. He mentioned Nick's time. I think that I think that's supposed to be name. He mentioned Nick's name three or four times. I'm assuming that's name anyway. Don't quote me on that. Um, they explained to the judge what anime is. He knew what the anime. He knew what the anime was kind of. Casey said Vic's name wrong. Um, before I go on, uh, Casey is um is Monica and Ron's attorney. So um, I don't know why I didn't why I didn't notice that the uh. The court document I was reviewing yesterday was actually from him, so I don't really know why I didn't why I didn't see that before. But um, yeah, there was a lot of stuff in that do in that document that I didn't really understand, but I wanted to share my thoughts about it with you guys anyway. So, yeah. Judge asked what the court could do for Vic. Vic's lawyer, um, Ty Beard, answered to repair Vic's name. Depositions probably are gonna be on probably are gonna be on the second week of June and will be held at the courthouse. No anti-slap motion after Vic's deposition. Sorry for that cut, but I uh, I did a search on it, um, on the anti-slap. So um, b since the case is happening in Texas, I also I also had to go to this to this site uh, that preface that it w preface that it's um the law under Texas law. But anyway, the, the legal definition under Texas. But anyway, the statute allows for for dismissal of suits based on any type of communication in any medium that is related to a matter of public of public concern or pertaining to or in connection with any governmental proceeding or issue being considered by any governmental branch or between individuals who join together to collectively express promote pursue or defend common interests so my bad so <laughs> essentially what so essentially what the um so essentially what the judge did was he basically was from what I can tell, he basically uh, I don't really want to put words in the judge's mouth, but um this is how I see it. So Monica and Ron's lawyer Casey basically tried to basically tried to get an out of, to get a uh, to get out of it or something like that, and the judge basically won't allow it. So. But factualness of this is iffy because Nick w does not think the judge can do that. We'll find out um, on Nick's stream tonight because apparently he's um, he's going to be doing a stream. He's going to be doing a, a stream um, about this case, L like about um, about what went on here. So that'll be interesting to see tonight. No confidentiality for depositions, uh, apart from tax filings and things like that. Judge asked where the ju judge asked why they're here. Casey does not think the tweeting by Ron Soye is. 
Casey does not think the tweeting by Ron Soye is not is not de is not defamation. Nick, I sent Ty a text message. Congratulations. And Ty replied, no way, the farms have the transcripts of the hearing already. Now, again, I, 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 I don't really know if they do have the transcripts, but if it's ever, if it's officially released, I look forward to reading that. So yeah, that, that's the uh, first piece of information. And then the uh, second piece is actually this. So this is actually Jamie Murky's response um, to what's going on. And so, according to Supergirl, Marky is basically denying everything. So, let's go on ahead and go through this step by step. Defendant in the above styled and, new and numbered case and files this, this original answer, and would, respectively, and, and would respectfully show the court the following. General denial. Def defendant, Jamie Markey, generally, generally def deni <laughs> defense, generally denies each and every, all in singular, the material allegations contained in the plaintiff's original petition and any amendments and or supplements thereto, and, being allegations of fact, demands that the plaintiff be required to prove such allegations by the, re by the requisite standard of proof if the plaintiff can do so. Here's the thing, the proof is all there. It's all there. Literally all of her tweets, all of her slanderous tweets, not to mention all of Soye's tweets and stuff like that. I mean, I understand that, th th that this is just Marky, but all of their tweets are documented. They're all in that original document. Or at least all the ones that pertain to the case that are defamatory. So, I don't really see how you can get... I don't really see how one minute you can be all for getting back at the guy, slandering his name, and all of that stuff, and then the moment um, court, papers go court papers come against you for what you've done, you immediately backpedal and say, oh, don't pay attention to any of that, I didn't really mean it. Well, here's the thing, it doesn't change the fact that you did it. So, yeah, have fun, um, have fun defending yourself on the witness stand. <laughs> I'll, um, I'll have a bag of popcorn ready. To be honest, but um, come come to think of it, I need to buy more. I've been running out. But anyway, <laughs> affirmative defenses, strictly in the alternative and by way of alter of, of a alternative defense, affirmative defense. Defendant asserts a, a qualified privilege to any alleged statements made the basis of the plaintiff's claims, including but not limited to the fact that any matters allegedly addressed were of public and or private importance, were made in good faith and without malice. Yeah, try telling that to the, um, to the post where you basically said that you wanted his you-know-what on a platter. You can't say that that, you can't say that that's not without malice, not with that word usage. On a subject in which the defendant and any recipients had an interest of duty. Strictly in the, strictly in the, in the alternative and by, and by way of affirmative defense, Defendant asserts that she committed no act and or omission which would justify any claims for exemplary or punitive damages. Yeah, so basically, so, I'm gonna try to translate this with my limited legal knowledge. So basically what, um, I guess that's, um, yeah, so that's Jamie's attorney. So basically what Jamie's attorney is saying is that, um, what she said on Twitter about Vic and stuff like that did not, won't mean anything. That's basically what the person is saying, and she's tr and they're trying to basically skirt around this impasse when there's clearly no when there's clearly no bridge to get over, <laughs> to get over, and you know I, I mean you can't really you really can't defend this you really can't defend statements like that because. I mean, you can't joke about it, stuff like stuff like that. You can't joke about stuff like that, no matter how cynical of a person you are. But anyway, defendant would show that plaintiff's claims for exemplary and or and or punitive damages are in violation of defendant's rights under the first, fifth, eighth, and fourteenth amendments. Yeah, here's the thing. Um, yeah, first amendment. Yeah, it guarantees freedom, freedom, freedom of speech. But here's the thing. Something that these people have forgotten is. Yes, we have freedom of speech in this country, but we don't have freedom from consequence. That does not mean that you get... That does not mean that... Okay, so let's say that... that let's say that I went and I badmouthed Tug. Let's say I badmouthed Tug or that Umbrella guy. Let's say I badmouthed him or even Hero Hay or Yellow Flash. Someone else like that. And I, I said something that was very damaging. Let's say I said something that was very damaging. Like, I don't know. 
Um, like let's say let's say I said to Tug, "Hey, ma hey, man, your shoe's untied," or something like that, and Tug took it as an offense, as an offense, and something that da and and as something that damaged his character. That would be that would be uh that I know I realize this is a stupid example, but I wouldn't be freed from the consequences of what I said, basically. Which is exactly what this, pr what Jamie's lawyer is arguing against, that she it is arguing against. The lawyer is basically arguing that Jamie isn't responsible for anything, and that she's completely consequence-free for anything that she said against Vic Mignogna. I'm sorry, but she's not. She's not in the slightest. But anyway. Fourth Amendment to the U.S. Constitution, Article, Article... One sections three, eight, and nineteen of the Texas Constitution. In that, such claims claims are arbitrary, unreasonable, excessive, and in violation of defendant's rights to, to due process of law and equal protection under the law. Defendant for well, I'm not really sure how that I'm not really sure how um due process works in this case. But here's the thing: y Jamie is one of the ones that literally threw Vic Mignogna under a bus. She literally grabbed him and threw him under under a bus in the figurative sense destroyed his entire reputation in the in the span of a month or maybe a couple weeks i don't i don't exactly remember it's been too long but i mean <clears throat> what she didn't do was allow vic due process she didn't allow vic to have due process and now that vic and Ty Beard are fighting to give vic due process which he shouldn't have been which he should have been guaranteed from the beginning Jamie is backpedaling and she's trying to get her attorney to basically cry wolf. Basically. But, anyway. Defendant further submits that due process requires any such claims for exemplary or punitive damages to be proved beyond a reasonable doubt under the Sixth Amendment of the U.S. Constitution. Yeah, um, if beyond a reasonable doubt, um, has the same definition in a court of law as it does in, as it does when the police arrest somebody, that's not going to be hard to prove whatsoever, especially once um, the judge gets to see the tweets firsthand. Additionally, the assessment of punitive damages, a remedy that is essentially criminal in nature, without safeguards greater than those afforded by the Texas rules of civil procedure and the state and the law of the state, constitute the infliction of a criminal penalty without the necessary safeguards. Uh, guaranteed by the 1st, 5th, 6th, 8th, and 14th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution. Defendant would, would exert all limitations in an application of Chapter 41 of the Texas Civil Practice and Remedies Code. Number 4. Strictly in the affer- in the alter- <laughs> Dang it, why do I keep screwing up that word? Strictly in the alternative, and by way of affirmative defense, Bleh. Defendant <laughs> asserts the truth slash substantial truth of any alleged statements made the basis of plaintiff's claims. Wherefore premises, wherefore, premises considered, defendant prays that plaintiff take nothing by this suit, and that defendant go hence without delay and recover all costs expended in, on, in defendant's behalf. So basically, they they basically want it, want Jamie to get a refund for to get a refund. She they're basically saying that Vic and Ty Beard in the court owe her, when in when in actuality she owes Ty Vic and the court a very good explanation for everything that she's done. And then, um, I think this is the last page here. Yeah, I respectfully, yeah, respectfully submitted, um, the attorney's name. But yeah, guys, so, that's pretty much all that's, that's pretty much all for this update video. Um, I don't really know how many more of these I'm gonna be able to make. Um, mostly due to the fact that summer's coming up and stuff like that, so. Um, I mean, when the deposition actually does happen, because if, if, it, if it's actually going to happen in the second, uh, in the second or third week of June, um, I might be able to, I, I mean, if the, if the deposition documents are made available to the public, like, um, like the, uh, hearing documents were, then I'm probably gonna, well, even though it's, even though it's from a first-hand witness instead of an actual transcriptor, um, then I'll, um, I'll be covering it. I'll be covering it either in live stream form or uh, pre-recorded like I am here. But, um, either way, you guys are gonna get to hear my opinion on it and stuff like that. Um... Thank you so much uh, for watching. The channel is at the channel is at about 475 subscribe subscribers at, at the time of this video's recording. Um, I can't th I can't thank you guys enough for that. To be honest, I really appreciate it. Um, thank you guys so much for watching my content too. I greatly appreciate it. I, I to be honest with you guys, I never thought that I would get um this far.
I mean, I mean, not through this, not through this by any means, but through my other content. I never thought that I would get to almost 500 subs. Um, I mean, when I started this channel, 2019, when I started this channel, um, six years ago now, I, I really didn't know what, I really didn't know what to expect. I, I didn't, I didn't think that I would, uh, that I would, I mean, <laughs> I didn't even think I would get like a hundred subs, but here I am, here I am, in a, here I am in almost uh, five times that, and I have you guys to thank for that. And yeah, um, I realize that my sub count isn't related at all to the situation, but I just want I just wanted to say thank you so much to everyone for uh, supporting my content and stuff like that. I really appreciate it. Um, you guys inspire me. You guys, um, you guys help me out with content creation and stuff like that. Uh, you inspire me to go on as well because there have been several times, um, in my very short YouTube career where I have been, um. I've been attacked, I've been, um, I've been berated, I've been, um, slandered against, and discriminated against, discriminated against all of this stuff, and it's made me want to give up, it's made me want to give up, but you guys, you guys keep me going, you guys keep me going, you inspire me to keep going strong, and to be honest, I, I couldn't be any more grateful, I couldn't be any more grateful to have such a supportive audience, uh, to have such a supportive and loving audience. Um, but anyway, um, I probably should have put that in, w in one of my review videos, but, um, but anyway, so, thank you guys so much for watching, um, in the meantime, um, unless something major comes up, um, in the case again, um, the next major video I'm gonna be doing is, uh, my reaction to Nintendo's E3 presentation, so, um, I believe it's on the 11th, I think, I, it's either, it's either the 10th or the 11th, I can't remember, but, um, but, um, look forward to that, um, and stuff like that. So, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you guys so much for watching, and God bless. Later.